Hola amigos, today I have a short tutorial where we'll be talking a bit about decals. And what's so special about them, you might be asking? Well, these ones are actually Niagara systems. Here, it will be more obvious if we look at this one, which has some forces and more particles. On this last one, I'm sampling a volume texture, which avoids stretching the image along the projection axis. So, the reason for all of this is that there is not really a straightforward way to achieve this effect, and the quote-unquote official method is not recommended even by the engine itself, as we'll see in a moment. Also, we will use these techniques in the next chapter of my cinematic VFX series, so I thought it was a good idea to explain this in a separate video, to avoid adding another 10 minutes of runtime to the next one. Let me show you what I meant by the official way with this Niagara system. In theory, I can add a component renderer to this emitter, but we have a couple problems with that. The first one is that this is only compatible with CPU simulations, which we could change but it limits our options. The second one is that, as the description says, this renderer is very experimental and doesn't perform very well. In addition to those issues, I was not having luck trying to show how bad it works, so I will just suggest we skip all of that and move directly to the solution to these problems. We will start by building the mesh version of the material that we will use in our particles. This is how this material works. If we make this cube transparent, the engine is still painting those pixels that we see through it, and we have a method to get their wall position behind the cube. After that, we can do a bit of math to remap the distance between those pixels behind the cube and the cube itself, and transform those into UV coordinates. This is more or less how decals work normally, so basically we are going to make a material version of what normally is a scene component. The material will work in the same way as decals do, and inherits the transforms of the mesh, so it can be scaled and rotated normally. We will also add a smooth transition along the projection axis to fade the texture in and out as the object moves. Let's create this material from scratch. After that, we'll just have to make a few tweaks to make it work with a particle system. I've named this one Material Decal Mesh. Let's jump right into it. Before we start adding nodes though, we'll take a look at the Material Properties panel. The main thing that we have to change here is the Blend Mode, which is set to Translucent. I will use Unlit Materials for all of these examples, but you can use this technique for regular lit materials as well. Start by adding a copy of this node, World Position Behind Translucency. This will return the position of the pixel that we see behind the object. From here, we'll subtract the position of the object's pivot point, which for our cube is in the center. Now add a transform vector node, which we will use to convert this from world to local space. We can now take this vector and divide it by a number, which we are going to set with a user parameter. This one will control the size of the texture, which you probably want to make smaller than the unscale object so we don't clip the image. In my case, I know that the cube that I'm using is 100 units long, so I will set it to 75. Note that the object can be scaled afterwards, and the decal will scale it with it as well, since we are using the object's local space. Next, add a constant 0.5 to it, to center the texture, and this will give us the coordinates for our sampler. Since we are going to project the texture vertically for now, we need to use a component mask to get the red and green channels, which correspond to the X and Y coordinates, although we can also add a second component mask to get the blue channel, since we will use this one in a moment too. Now we can add a texture sample node and connect the RG component mask to the UV input. I'm going to use a texture parameter so I can instance this later and change the decal image if I need to. Let me find a good texture to put here as the fall value. This one will do for this example. Now, we could change the wrapping mode on the texture properties, but since this is a decal, we probably want to make it not tile. So we are going to do it in the material simply by clamping the UVs between 0 and 1 using a saturate node. Give me a moment to add some comment boxes to make the graph easier to read. 
perfect. Now, we could output the texture sample as it is now, but we are going to add a vector parameter to tint the image with some color. After multiplying the sample and color RGB values, we can connect the result to the emissive output of the material. For the opacity, we are going to gradually fade the texture from the origin point using the vertical coordinate, which we have here in the second component mask. This is just a simple gradient, done by scaling down the value and then taking the sign of that number. The result is clamped again and multiplied by both the texture and color parameter alpha values before connecting it to the opacity output. You can bias and scale the sign operation to modify this gradient, or use something like a smooth step function to change how the decal fades in and out. Give me a second to add more comments for this last group of notes. Once everything is connected and all the parameters have default values, we can give this a try. Great, the decal is working as intended. You can rotate or scale the mesh and the texture will follow along. If you move the object vertically, the decal becomes fully visible when the object is centered on the surface and it fades in both directions until it gets outside of range. Note that the vertical scale of the object will also scale the gradient. And it is important to remember that the projection axis is defined locally, so you just have to reorient the mesh if you want to project the decal on a vertical surface. Let's move on to putting this on particles. These Niagara systems here have a mesh renderer with a spinning cube that uses a duplicate of the material that we just made with a few changes. The first one is that instead of the object's position, we're using the particle position node. Next, the transform node is the same, but we are changing the destination property to instance and particle space. Otherwise, the vector would be in the local space of the emitter, not the particles. Finally, I replace the size property with a dynamic parameter, and the texture sample is now multiplied by the particle color instead of the vector parameter that we used on the other material. And that's all the changes that we have to make to make this decal material work on particles. Let's check the emitters that I was using on these examples earlier. And these are all very simple. The first one is spawning a single particle with unlimited lifetime, which is rendered as a cube mesh with this material applied. The emitter also has an update mesh orientation module to make the decal spin on the vertical axis. As you can see, this emitter is pretty straightforward. Other than the mesh renderer with our decal material, you can do almost anything with these emitters and everything should work fine. One thing that I forgot to mention earlier is that if you're using very large decals and the texture disappears when the camera is inside the mesh, you can fix the problem simply by making these materials double-sided. The second emitter is a duplicate of the first one, except that I changed the color and the orientation of the mesh to project the decal along the y-axis. The third emitter is basically the fountain template, using the dynamic parameter to scale the texture over the particle's lifetime. You can achieve the same effect by scaling the mess instead, or use the dynamic parameters to control other aspects of the material. But the thing about the cals is that, no matter how you project them on a mesh, they will always stretch on the faces parallel to the projection axis. One solution is to sample a volume instead, like is happening here with this last emitter. As you can see, the texture continues seamlessly across perpendicular surfaces, with no stretching at all. To achieve this, we need to make a few more changes to our material. First, we don't need the component mask, since volume samplers use XYZ coordinates for the UVs. I'm using one of the volume noises available in Unreal, but feel free to experiment with other textures or SDF shapes. The second change is that I'm using a sphere mask to calculate the opacity instead of the distance in a single axis, using the positions in world space as inputs and passing the radius and hardness of the mask as dynamic parameters. Finally, I added a bit of animation to make the noise change over time, but that is just a simple sign of a scale down time to make the gradient cycle. And that's it for the volume decal material. The emitter of the example is also a fountain, using random colors and sphere meshes instead of cubes, but otherwise is the same as the previous one.
I think that with this last bit, we can end today's tutorial here. If you stayed until the end, thank you for watching this video. We will be using these techniques when we come back to the cinematic BFX series in the next one. And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to give a like and subscribe using the buttons below, and leave a comment if you have questions or suggestions for a BFX breakdown. See you next time!